Bionicle Heroes was heading for a rating that LEGO found unacceptable. To get the rating that we needed, we had to make some pretty major changes to the game, but I found a prototype before any of those changes were made, so let's take a look. Okay, well you can see this is a pretty basic hub. I'll just navigate to the one sort of test level that was on this build. You can see it's from February 2006, so a good 10 months before the game came out, something like that, nine, 10 months, I think, came out in November. And you can see straight away, this game is a first person shooter. Now the game we shipped was third person. You saw the Lego model of the Bionicle hero you were playing. Uh, you saw an over the shoulder view and the original game was envisioned to be a first person shooter and we've got quite a long way through development like that so this is the build you're seeing uh, you can see you have all the different weapons in here from the different characters that i'll just go through while i'm talking and you can see you know, the shotgun effect and what happened is we put in a preliminary sort of esrb um, rating request just to see how, how it was looking and pretty much every first person shooter at the time was getting a mature rating and if you look at Halo back on the Xbox even though there wasn't anything in the way of blood it was all sci-fi futuristic weaponry it was getting a, an M rating so the fact that it was a first person shooter was causing big issues Lego needed this game to be a an E or an E10 because obviously Lego toys are marketed to kids um, and every Lego game so far and since has been a E rated or E10 rated. And so it was unacceptable to be to to have a first person shooter, which causes big problems. We're like, well, the whole point of this is to make a first person shooter for kids. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into that system. Uh, the way it works, you've got you can look around on on the right analog stick, you move on the left analog stick, and when you're firing, you strafe. So as you're holding down the fire button, you can strafe left and right. So it's an interesting control system. Um, and I'm not quite sure how much that uh, varied in the final game. Um, but anyway, so first person shooter, a long way through it. And we realized there's, you know, we're not going to get permission from Lego to have a game that is even teen rated, you know, because that was seen as too old. So even if we could persuade the ESRB to make it not mature, to drop it down to a teen, we were still going to have issues. Um, so we had, to, we had to change the game to an over the shoulder character view. But anyway, let's have a look at this. Let's play through here. Let's have a look at some of the changes. This is obviously the first person uh, camera view. The targeting automatically locks on. The camera will look at the creature that's nearest to your viewpoint. I find this weapon to be the most effective. Um, you can see there's an overheat meter here, which you don't get in the final game. There's a picture of the mask or the character face that you're playing as, uh, changing expression and things like that as you're playing and taking damage. Um, you see the hand come out there, there's a move where you can fire bricks with the other hand that you've collected. Uh, you can see the health at the top, the green there, it's pretty low. If you lose a character, uh, if a character dies out of your party, then they become unplayable for a while until they uh, are added back into your roster of characters. You can change, in this demo, you can change character at any time to any of the characters. Uh, in, the, in the final game, you would collect character masks as you went. So you'd start with a basic character for the zone and you would have to collect more through the level to be able to use all the different abilities. So let's, uh, let's play through here and see what we've got. Uh, the targeting, reticule. Oh, see there I've died. So now I won't be able to select that character for a while if I cycle through them. Um, let's just see, use different weapons. It's kind of our grenade guy. It's kind of our basic rapid fire, but overheats quickly. Energy weapon, which I, <laughs> I find the most effective. We probably changed it for the final game. See, so green guy's gone, you couldn't use him. And then we're back to this sort of rail gun. And again, it's, it's, it's a shame we couldn't keep this viewpoint, but also, um, I'm not sure what these objects are. This, this is normally the button you press to do like a build in the game but there's nothing working there. So I'm guessing it's temporary or something's gonna spawn when we do whatever with that cube. Um, I'm not sure what that was for. We did have something you filled up with bricks and then you could activate it at some point, but I don't think that's uh, in this build. So it's probably just, again, early prototype. 
Um, so yeah, the, the reticule, quite soon after this build, the targeting reticule changed depending on the character you were playing as well. So we had different ones for different characters, I believe. Um, but it's a, it's a different kind of feel, changing from third person to first person. Um, and, you know, I kind of like the game we ended up with, with the third person view, because you get to see a lot more of the Lego Bionicle figures, who are after all of the heroes. But there was something cool about just being a first person game. Um, so it was a real shame. But anyway, let's, uh, let's play through this level and you get to see uh, the state of this. This is our sort of proof of concept level. On the build you might have seen there was other levels selectable that were in various states but none of them really had any uh, enemies in them. This was a proof of concept to show the graphic style, the weapons, the enemies, and all that kind of stuff. Um, looks like there's somewhere down. Can I go down here? I don't know, there's something over there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, you can fall down here. There's something up there, I don't know if I can shoot it. That's probably somewhere where we would have had to feed bricks to unlock. The we went through various different ideas for how you would progress through a level. Uh, I think, as deadly as that looks, I meant to go down that hole in the middle. That might have been something up there that I triggered that would then make this a lift to move down that I've now skipped or broken, but let's see. Let's just jump on down the hole. It's quite a long hole. And, oh. That is a long way down. Okay, let's have a look. So there's some pieces of Lego in here that you can break, but not a lot compared to the final game. Um, kind of basic kind of blurbs. And the idea with this game, to differentiate it from the other Lego games, is pretty much all the Lego with technical Lego, uh, which is the Lego that has the kind of little holes in it. Uh, Technic, I think it's called. Um, so here's a a construction or construction, I think we called it in the final game, I can't remember where you were, you would have to build various things here. I think we call, we're building kind of like a kind of a, a rail car or something on some tracks, uh, which I could try and use, but I'm a bit worried these enemies are going to kill me, but we'll have a go. If I can just hit this. Oh, no, got shot. Okay. Right, I better, be, better deal with them then. Uh, where are they? Okay. So you can fire bricks with one hand. Weapon with the other. So I guess if your weapon overheats, you could change the bricks. Uh, you can see the gun there smoking a little. So as it gets hot, it smokes more and more. I'll change to a different weapon. This one really doesn't have much of an overheat at all. It's, it's definitely overpowered in this version of the game. But I love the graphics. I love the style of all the mist and the effects. This is a PlayStation 2 game. And I think it looks pretty great for a PlayStation 2. Um, all the different effects and things. Uh, sort of sleety rain kind of going on, or mist, fog in the background. Uh, where do you go? Oh, some spiders coming in. And get some of these from the train. Yep, that's one. That's the other. Okay, so I can get off at this point because uh, there's a missing track. So let's kill this guy and see if we can swap to the. There he is. So build some tracks. Yeah, and I can't remember how close this was to the final level in the final game. Obviously the viewpoint had to change. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments how close this was. Without going and looking. There was a lot of levels in this game. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I can't remember exactly when this was. Uh, and how much made it into the final game. I'd have thought we'd have probably changed some of the mechanics as we... because we added modes where you could power up and become a gold bionicle who was indestructible and all kinds of different things by the time the game was finished. Um, and different ways of getting through the level, so I'm not sure where we ended up in terms of this design and how much would have been adapted for the final game. Let's just put that track in and get back on this vehicle. There we go. Okay. But yeah, we kind of toyed with an idea with with the idea that once we couldn't do first person shooter, should we make it like a platform game? Should you run around like a proper third person game where the camera moves more like the traditional Lego game? But we just thought that's just going to be 
a complete redesign of everything. And it wasn't really the spirit of what we were going for. So our programmers and artists tried out various different viewpoints and we ended up with a character on the left of the screen. Um, and kind of the same kind of camera as this, we had to change the way the animations all worked and the, the movement and the rotation points and things like that to make it work with the over the, over the shoulder viewpoint, um, which people would call third person. I mean, is it, is it second person? I don't know what you would call it now. Um, nice fire effect. And I like the uh, kind of reflective crystals and rocks around here. But yeah, let's, uh, I think we're fairly close to the end of the level. I'm not sure if it's very well defined how the level ends. Let's have a look up here and see around the corner. There's somebody down there. Let's go this way. Okay, there's sort of a water. water. Oh yeah, so there's another one of those devices. Again, I don't think it does anything at the moment when I fire bricks at it. So maybe I just go wander around and there's a end point somewhere maybe oh well done okay so there you go <laughs> i've completed the level somehow um like i said it was a prototype so let me see if there's some i can still play a lot i'm still shooting there's a couple of bad guys here i can take out can i kill them yes i can so there you see, right, that's, so that's the first person view. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Was it better? Should we have uh, taken the ratings hit and gone for a first person view? Or is the third person just fine? Let me know in the comments. If you like, please leave a like. And as always, I'd love you to subscribe. Thanks for supporting this channel. Goodbye.